It's finally the summer, it is the weekend, you've got some patio dining lined up with some friends. What are you gonna serve? Rosé wine, of course, and I have three great reasons why. First of all, it is far easier and simpler than blending cocktails. Second of all, it actually has a lot fewer calories than beer or spirits. And finally, it is hugely versatile in terms of flavors and food pairing options. It's like a midway between a white wine and a red wine. And one more bonus reason, rosé wine comes in tons of different convenient packaging from plastic bottles, from totes, screw cap, these cute little cans. So it's great for al fresco dining situations. Today, I'm gonna to look at the different styles of rosé wine, give you some great food pairing options for each type, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna give you an easy, delicious rosé wine dessert recipe that is a guaranteed crowd pleaser. Mmm, so we're gonna start with your pre-dinner rosés. These are the ones that I like to sip on their own or just pair with little apéro nibbles. The first one being sparkling rosé. So these come in all styles from bone dry to quite sweet, from light and easy drinking. Prosecco has just come out with their Prosecco rosé, so watch out for those in stores this summer all the way up to some very posh, very elegant, traditional method sparkling rosés like champagne rosé. Next up, we have the pale, light-bodied, very dry rosés. I'm thinking Provence rosé, or really anything from the south of France fits this category, and there are loads and loads of lookalikes in this category from all over the world nowadays. These styles are light in body and they also have quite delicate flavors. So you don't want to overpower them with anything too rich or bold. Salmon tartare, grilled prawns, roasted veggies, or goat's cheese work well. Then we get into some more medium to full bodied rosés that are still quite dry, but have a bit of a firmer structure to them, earthier flavors, quite subtle fruit, and often fairly high acidity, like this Gamay Pinot Noir from Quailsgate. So rosés from places like Burgundy, Sancerre, Sangiovese-based rosés in Italy, some Bandol in the southern France, these all fit this category. And these firmer, deeper colored rosés spend more time macerating on the skins before fermentation. They're great with heartier foods like roast poultry, marinated duck breast, souvlaki, mushroom or eggplant type dishes, these would all be great. They definitely need that food pairing because they tend to have a little bit more astringency on the palate. And higher acid grapes in this category, like Pinot Noir or Sangiovese for example, these would go really well also with tomato based dishes where the acidities would be nicely aligned. Next we have another medium bodied category, but with more overt fruit dry to slightly off dry and much more rounded on the palate. I'm thinking places like Tavel in the Rhone Valley, Navarra or Rioja in Spain, warmer parts of California or Australia make these styles. And these can be tricky to spot because they can range in color from quite pale to a deep raspberry shade like you could find on a Tavel. So these dry, fruity, rounded rosés work really well with mildly spiced dishes. I'm thinking fish tacos, fajitas, ceviche. They also work really well with savory sweet combinations, like a meat with a fruit sauce, a salad with a raspberry vinaigrette, things like that. Finally, we have our sweet rosés. And these can really run the gamut from a rosé d'Anjou, for example, from the Loire Valley that's about 20 grams per liter, to a white Zinfandel that's about double that in terms of sugar, all the way to your Moscato rosés, which can easily be 60 to 80 grams per liter of sugar. If you like sweet rosé wine on its own, go ahead, but they can also give a couple really interesting options for food pairing. Sweetness is great for tempering spice. So think about the hotter Indian or Thai curries. The sweetness here and the fruitiness would work really, really well. They also obviously work very well with dessert. But the thing to remember when you pair a sweet wine with a sweet food is you need the wine to be slightly sweeter than the food. Otherwise, the combination can be a bit sickly. Red berry desserts are always a winner here. So there you have it. Now it's time to share a delicious recipe for rosé popsicles. 
This is a super fun, easy dessert. Just make sure you don't mix them up with your kids' pops in the freezer. So you're gonna take one cup of in-season strawberries or raspberries, the juice of half a lemon, a simple syrup of equal parts white sugar and water that you cook on medium high heat until the sugar dissolves, and 375 milliliters of your favorite rosé wine. Get out your blender, mix the fruit, the lemon, and the wine together, strain it if you don't like seeds, then sweeten to taste. Then distribute into your popsicle molds and freeze for at least six to eight hours, and voila. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna be posting a list of great value rosé wines on my blog, so I'll put the link down there in the description to that. And if you like this video, as always, please share, please like, and do subscribe. It really helps me to keep this channel going. See you next time, and until then, enjoy the summer and your rosé wine. Santé!